Good Tuesday evening, everybody, live and direct from somewhere in Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. It is a chilly, kind of dreary evening out there. We don't have, again, a lot going on where it comes to any very much very warm conditions out across the Mid-South as we take a look over the area. It's going to be a pretty kind of the same way all the way throughout the Mid-South tonight. We've even got a few showers and thunderstorms popping up into parts of the area. We don't, again, have a lot of anything going on, but we'll take a look at radar coming up here uh, in just a little bit. Again, currently we're not seeing too much of anything in the way of major activity for the time being. We may see the potential of some more showers and thunderstorms into the forecast as we get into the course of the rest of the evening. So if you have any plans for travel tonight, a little bit of extra time may not be such a bad idea just to be on the safe side. We continue again to see the possibility of some more uh, good weather coming our way as we get into the end of the week. Now that's great news again, but we do have some problems out there when we talk about toward the end of the week. And for Veterans Day, that also could be a bit of a problem as we get into the rest of the forecast for any outdoor ceremonies, parades, anything like that to commemorate Veterans Day. So that could be a bit of a problem out there, but otherwise not really looking at a lot of major concerns for the time being at this point. Welcoming in all of our viewers on Facebook at this time. We're going to be uh, talking again about your complete forecast coming up here in just a little bit. If you're brand new to the program. We are live on Periscope, Twitter, and Facebook, my own Facebook page at facebook.com slash Austinonic WREG. So welcome to everybody for tuning in. It is just past 8.30 Central Standard Time uh, in Memphis, Tennessee. And once again, it feels a lot more like London, England, or maybe San Francisco, or quite possibly Seattle out there for tonight as we get in some very chilly temperatures into the Mid-South for tonight and looking at some pretty cool numbers into the rest of the next couple of days. That's fine, considering what we did have a couple of days ago with temperatures near 80 degrees. Remember that back around Sunday or so? Not going to be happening this time around. So we are looking at some nicer temperatures for at least a little bit. But into the weekend, things are going to be kind of changing as we get into around Veterans Day. We'll talk more about that. Have to apologize. A little bit of uh, some minor grease stains taking place here. Was doing some recipe making in the kitchen tonight. Some uh, mixture of uh, uh, cabbage leaves and a mixture of different types of meats together. We're going to be putting that in the crock pot tomorrow. No idea how well that's going to work, but you definitely get into your work here when you're make, mixing up new recipes. So if anybody wants to love that, uh, wants to give that a try, let me know and I'll forward the recipe on to you to let you know more about what's happening. Sissy Samuels, welcome to the show and hope the goats are doing fine. My wife is looking forward to uh, coming back and uh, working with the goats at some point. Bozo Wolfolk from Senatobia, welcome to the show for this evening. Again, a little bit on the hazy side. The view from Germantown for tonight is showing again a lot of haze and some drizzle and some fog out there for this evening. I'm going to continue to see that. We'll take a look at visibilities coming up here in just a little bit, but this could be the start of a very foggy and drizzly evening out there. Brian Hopper, welcome to the show. Uh, Jersey Harris, sorry, I don't work for Uber Eats, and that's only for us here, but uh, you know, bring your fork and a plate, and we'll see what we can do for you. Uh, Brian Hopper from Union City, Tennessee. Very cool. Thank you for checking in uh, to the show tonight, and again, for everybody checking in for right now on Periscope and Twitter, drop your uh, questions and your comments about the forecast into the comments section and we'll do our best to get those answered here in just a little bit. Let's take a look and see what's going on with radar, which again at this time technically does not amount to much, but we do have again some scattered showers taking place and some thunderstorms over northern parts of Mississippi. Everything moving to the east at about maybe 20 to 25 miles per hour or so. Worst activity right now and not even anywhere close to severe. Got some showers and thunderstorms around Ripley, Dumas, the heaviest activity back over to around east of Blue Mountain, and that's heading over toward uh, Jumpertown, Boonville, Baldwin, Guntown getting a little bit of a, high, of a higher rate of return shower there. And just to the east of I-22, that's the heaviest activity that we've got here, moving over into portions of the area of northwestern Alabama. So if you're traveling down I-22 tonight or maybe heading right along the Tennessee-Mississippi state line, going to be getting more activity like that. Scattered showers around Grand Junction, Moscow, and south of Hickory Valley, right around the area just to the west of Middleton, a little bit of more in the way of showers here. An occasional thunderstorm going on here at this time. Uh, Jersey Harris from around Selmer. Thank you very much. Uh, McNary County. 
looks like you're going to be missing a good deal of most of that rainfall, but we could see more of it happening uh, into the later hours. Taking a look at the entire Mid-South, again, not much for West Tennessee outside of that light stuff that we have down here. We do have a few sprinkles trying to pop up again south of I-40 in and around uh, Forest City, getting some activity here right to the west of the Mississippi River. For the metro, again, not that much going on. Could be looking at a few more scattered showers overnight and maybe some rumbles of thunder as well. So that could be a bit of a problem uh, for anybody out and traveling for this evening if you're going to be doing anything, anything like that. Have to mention, uh, again, if you've, just, if you've never tuned in here before and you can't stick around for all the forecasts, Check out the blue bar right here that's got the forecast for the Mid-South scrolling on past, so that'll keep you updated as to what's going on, so you won't have to listen to me blather on endlessly about all kinds of other stuff that you don't want to hear about. That's why we're on your side. We want you to have the experience of, again, we're letting you know what you can get on here uh, when you can get it, so just helping you update yourself on stuff like that. Let's go ahead and get into nationwide type stuff and see you a little bit more about what's going on here. Rena is a tropical storm over the mid-Atlantic. It is not a threat to anything uh, involving landfall. It is way out past Bermuda at this time, which is way over this direction into and around the western part of the Atlantic at this point in time. And this is expected to not be a problem for the United States. This is going to be curving its way up and over to the northeast. Eventually, it will be a problem, again, for what looks to be the British Isles. So maybe Scotland picking up another storm of this nature heading up and into this uh, particular area. Uh, Jersey Harris, certified Skywarn spotter. Very good. We need more Skywarn spotters out there. Betty Wilbanks from Corinth, Mississippi. Welcome to the show. We'll talk more about the uh, conditions out that direction here in just a little bit. Currently, again, we've got winds mainly out of the north at this time, and that's going to be the way it looks throughout the course of the rest of the evening. Again, most of what we're seeing for right now is those north-northeasterly breezes, and those will continue throughout uh, the rest of the evening, just not really picking up much in the way of major amounts of uh, rainfall or anything else out there for the time being. Now, getting into around, say, tomorrow morning, morning into tomorrow afternoon. It remains pretty much on the cool side out there, a reinforcing shot of cool air in our future, and then looking at some fairly nice conditions as we go into the weekend. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a bit. Main problem for tonight is going to be, again, dense fog. We may be looking again at the potential for very low visibilities, and that could be something that may affect your travel, your commute to work or school in the morning. Visibilities right now, Technically not doing all that bad. We have visibility of one and a half miles uh, being reported around the Millington Airport at this time. Two and a half miles being reported up around Obion County. Uh, if I get the marker to work, there we go. Union City at Everett Stewart Regional Airport, two and a half miles there. Two and a half miles between Henderson and Decatur counties in Tennessee at Beach River Regional Airport. And two and a half miles, looks like that's Olive Branch at the airport. So not entirely terrible right now. Uh, Bolivar at William L. Whitehurst. Uh, looking at two-mile visibility as well, so not totally bad just yet, but I'm guessing that it could be even worse into tomorrow. If you are traveling, this area of the world is seeing some more problems uh, out into and around the Gulf of Alaska. This large swirl of energy right here in the center part of your screen, large storm system uh, that's going to be barreling into southwestern parts of Canada around Vancouver, British Columbia, and that will have an effect on the weather back to the west of us. We'll be looking for uh, more potential of some stronger winds and also some snow and ice and maybe some fairly hazardous travel conditions up into around the Pacific Northwest. Not where we're located. What we're going to be seeing is an area of high pressure making its way down from the north, and that's going to be very dry air. Some possibility more snow around the Great Lakes. That's going to be about as much as we see for anything this front. The next one arrives in the Mid-South as we go into very early Friday, but it will be, it looks like, a dry front, so we don't see a lot in the way of problems with this moving on through. But the chances of rain with those green colors that you see there from tonight all the way through about early Thursday, 
Thursday morning, Friday, uh, Thursday morning into around Friday morning. All that peels on off to the east, but it's going to take a couple more days to shovel all that stuff out of here. So it's going to be a while before we get rid of all that for the time being. Temperatures into tonight. Again, looking at the forecast, showing numbers back into the lower to mid 40s out there. Rainfall chances remaining in the mid south. Not great chances, but about a Looks like about a 15 to 25 percent chance across much of the area into overnight. For tomorrow, low temp or high temperatures in the lower to mid 50s. Beautiful day, a little bit more like November should be, a little bit below normal actually. This will be about 15 degrees below normal, but considering we spent most of the weekend above normal into and around 80 degrees, I don't think anybody's going to have a problem with these temperatures out there. It could be a little bit brisk as we go toward Friday night. Night, More on that in just a little bit. Chances for rainfall, greatest in the dark green in the lower left-hand corner here, looking at 30, 40, 50, 60 percent chances of rain from around Phillips County, Arkansas, south of Tupelo, Oxford, Batesville, Water Valley, Bruce into that area, picking up most of the rainfall there. Tomorrow night, low temperatures even colder as we start to finally clear things out, getting rid of all the cloud cover out there. So low temperatures tomorrow night will be back Back into the lower to mid 30s, up around Dyersburg, Union City, Real Foot Lake, lower 40s for the metro, north Mississippi, and southeast Arkansas. And the chances of rain will be sticking around early Wednesday night, but by the time we get ready for about daybreak on Thursday, whoosh, everything is gone, and that's it for the chances of rainfall out there. High temperatures on Thursday, brisk, but a little bit warmer back in the high 50s to lower 60s. Thursday night temperatures dropping to the 30s, even close to freezing around Dyersburg, Union City, north of I-40, around Humboldt, Jackson, uh, Milan, into that area. Could be looking at some uh, frost conditions there. Highs on Friday back in the mid to upper 50s to lower 60s. That's about as warm as it gets, and going forward into Friday night football, no rain expected, but by the time the ball kicks off Friday evening, you could be looking at temperatures in the upper 40s, and fortunately, it doesn't look like winds are going to be a huge amount of a problem, but they will be out of the northeast about 5 to 10, so definitely want to think about a scarf or some gloves and a hat for that football game uh, before you head out the door. Let's go ahead and go into uh, Saturday, high temperatures for Veterans Day, and again, thank you to all the veterans out there for uh, wearing the uniform. Very, again, proud to know you and to shake your hand, and thank you everybody else for the sacrifices that you made on the home front out there. Numbers back into the mid to lower 60s along and south of I-40, north of I-40, temperatures back in the mid to upper 50s or so, so decent into the weekend, but unfortunately, as we go into Saturday night, could be looking at the possibility of even more scattered showers reappearing across the area, and those will be sticking around, it looks like, right on into very very early on Sunday, but then chances of rainfall should be again out of here as we head into it looks like about Sunday night or so. Clouds sticking around as well. High temperatures on Sunday. A little warmer with those southerly winds. Not much, but a little bit going back into the lower to mid 60s. If you're a night owl and you're going to be doing stuff all night long, keeping an eye on social media and things like that, if your schedule's a little different, I try to cram pack the uh, Facebook page with as much stuff as I possibly can, whether it's weather, science, astronomy, general geekery, all kinds of other neat stuff in there. Uh, Facebook page is set for overnight to make certain that everybody gets something out there so your feed is relatively constantly refreshed by all kinds of other stuff. So check into my Facebook page at facebook.com slash WREG. Have to thank everybody for stopping by on Twitter tonight. Thanks for uh, coming along for the ride. And if you'd like to follow me on here, apparently I'm one of these people who gets double the characters now. Uh, instead of 140, we're up to 280 characters. So if you follow Twitter, I guess that's a thing. I've never really cared about how many characters that I have on there that much at all, but again, we still have some uh, stuff going on there. And look, hey, it's me watching me watching me. Cool. Also have to thank everyone for sending in pictures. Uh, James R. Gulledge III from up and around West Tennessee, Northwest Tennessee, sending in some very nice pictures of autumn in and around that area. And thank you very much uh, for sending in some of those sites of the autumn season up there. If you have pictures, drop by my Instagram page at Instagram slash Aonic 
no underscore necessary WREG3. And also we'll be keeping track of a whole bunch of other stuff on here, including information from the Climate Prediction Center. If you haven't followed along on this, great opportunity to learn more about what goes on with climate forecasts without all that tedious mucking around with farmers' almanacs and all kinds of stuff like that. Yes, my wife did get me a copy of the 2018 Farmers' Almanac, so I'm very thankful for that, for that sense of humor there. If you'd like to check out more about the forecast, all you have to do is go to wreg.com slash weather, where you can check out our seven-day forecast available there. Also, again, at this particular website. New time available for Bob and Josh. If you haven't listened to them, again, this is sports chat mainly, but they also do all kinds of other things, and including news, local community events, and, of course, weather with yours truly. So if you'd like to know more, listen on AM 730, Yahoo Sports Radio, for Talk Back Live with Bob and Josh. That'll be 8 to 10, their new time, Monday through Fridays, 8 to 10 a.m. If you can't listen on air, listen online at talkbacklivenetwork.org, uh, talkback and we'd love to have you along for the ride on that. Questions, concerns, ideas, anything you'd like to see on here that we have not been featuring, please let me know. There is, I can't help you if you don't say so. Likewise with your pictures. If you've got weather pictures, we'd love to see them, but we can't feature them if you don't send them. You see the kind of problem right there, and I'm waving my hands for absolutely no reason on this. Uh, this is something you can help us out with. We'd love to see more weather pictures from you. Send them in. Email address up there in the blue bar showing austin.onic at wreg.com and of course all over social media at various locations, so please follow along where you can there. We'll have another one of our weather overtimes coming up bright and early tomorrow morning, so stay tuned for more on that. Live and direct from Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with our latest edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. Thanks for joining us and stick around with more for News Channel 3 on air and online.